6'8 senior from Washington, Indiana, number 54, Steve Bucci. For Kentucky, at center, a 6'11 junior from Lexington, Kentucky, number 54, Melvin Kerpa. For Indiana, at center, a 7'2 Sabaroa from Munich, West Germany, number 33, Uwe Brooks. For Kentucky, at guard, 6'3 senior from Lexington, Kentucky, number 10, Kurt Minifield. For Indiana, at guard, a 6'3 senior from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, number 20, Jim Thomas. If you're like I am, you like to keep your with the best Buick and Dotson buys in Kentuckyana at Jim Cook Buick Dotson, downtown Louisville at 4th and Breckenridge. Tom Hammond and Larry Conley again for the Middies Regional in Knoxville, Tennessee. Here's the Wendell lineup, Kentucky in the blue uniforms, Minifield at a guard along Turpin in the center, on the wings, Horde and Hurst. And for the Hoosiers of Indiana, Thomas and Brown in the backcourt, Blount in the middle, Whitman and Bushy on the wings. Again, they played in Bloomington in December with Indiana winning 62-59. Their last NCAA matchup in 75, Kentucky won it 92-90. Wildcats control the tap, and Indiana comes up with a steal. Good defense by Jim Thomas as Kentucky tried to lob to Turpin. Well, that was an inadvertent pass that time, and they should have let the ball come down and set up their offense. Indiana now with the first steal of the game. Hoosiers attacking. Kentucky appears to be man-to-man, -man, Larry. Yeah, Minifield's guarding Whitman. That's an interesting matchup inside. There's Whitman going against Minifield. Shot off the glass is good for Randy Whitman. First two of the game. Interesting coaching strategy there, Tom. Right from the top to put Minifield on Whitman, who goes inside an awful lot. Indiana with the lead. 2-0. As always, Indiana opens up man-to-man. -man. Charles Hurt puts it off the glass. No good. Rebound Thomas. Indiana's leading rebounder comes down with it. How about that for a guard? Have your guard on your basketball team be your leading rebounder. He's just an outstanding athlete. Tony Brown on the point for the Indiana offense. Derek Ford is guarding Brown. Makes his move to the basket. No good. Rebound knocked around and saved in by Brown. Whitman shot good. He's 2-2. Two for two. And it's Randy Whitman who's come on. He got the first basket off the glass. He came back with the second one. He's 2-2. Two for two. Indiana with a 4-0 lead. Kentucky across the timeline. Dirk Minifield on the point. They break Horde out. Get the ball on the wing. He's leading off inside. He went up and he was in trouble. He lost the handle, but Brown couldn't handle it. It went out of bounds. It'll go again to Kentucky. Indiana puts such tough defensive pressure on you. That time he went inside. Horde did, and Jim Thomas was right in his face, and he had no one to give the ball up to. Horde injured his ankle back on February 26th. And is playing only about 50 minutes in the last five games. Indiana comes up again with the basketball. The Hoosiers with a 4-0 lead and attacking. Bushy in the corner. Hurt has him. Block loses it. Master picks it up on the fly. Brown back on defense. Master all the way in is fouled by Brown. First foul of the game. Well, an errant pass that time picked up by Jim Master of Kentucky and Brown just fouling to prevent the layup. Well, you see the end of it right here. Kentucky really had no one to guard right there. Brown had no choice. He had to make the foul against Master. Jim Master will step to the Kentucky free throw line looking for the Wildcats' first points. Master an 80% free throw shooter. He's knocking on the door of 1,000 this year, 935 in his career at Kentucky, a junior, a former Indiana Mr. Basketball. He got it. Coach Knight of the Hoosiers in his 12th year in Bloomington. He's won two national championships five times. He's been the Big Ten Coach of the Year. 
And as you know, will be the Olympic coach of the 1984 U.S. team. Thomas, amazing me. He's won 19 and lost five in NCAA play since he's been in Indiana. That's just an outstanding record. The Indiana native master rolls in the second free throw. Kentucky's first two points. It cuts the lead to two. 4-2 Hoosiers. Here's full court pressure from Kentucky. And it's man-to-man -man pressure. It's not the zone type pressure. Now master, a little bit of run and jump right there. Horton master freelancing against Brown, but he handles the press. Gets by the double team in the front court. There's Bucci in the corner. Thomas lobs to block. Block. Moves for the basket, and a foul is called on Uwe Block. That's his first and the second against Indiana. Block has really developed of late, but in the first meeting against Kentucky, Larry, he didn't score, he didn't get a rebound, while Melvin Turpin had 17 points and 10 rebounds. Well, that time the defensive play was made by Derek Cord. He came over to give Melvin Turpin a little bit of help in that post position, which both of these clubs are going to have to do because they're both so good defensively. Kentucky with a chance to tie with the bucket here. Minifield kicks it in the corner. Master shot from there. No good. Rebound. Horde of Kentucky. In heavy traffic, feeds it back to Minifield. He goes up with a jump shot and hits. Good effort by Derek Ford to get the offensive rebound and a good feed to Minifield. Kentucky's back in the game. We've got a tie. First field goal for the Wildcats. Minifield has been shooting more the last few games and has perked up the Kentucky offense. Brown, Whitman's wide open. No good. Rebound. Minifield takes it on the run. Here's a three on four break. Minifield holds up about 16 feet from the basket, backs it out, they'll set up the offense. That's a smart play. He was three on four, knew he had nowhere to go. He didn't have the numbers, pulled it back out to set the offense up. Smart play by Dirk Minifield. Inside, Turpin. They sag around him. He feeds it back to Minifield. Long shot. Good. Minifield's two for two. Kentucky has its first lead. Tom, they can ill afford to leave that young man open because he can shoot the basketball from just about 20 to 22 feet and in, and they're going to have to come out and get him. He's hit his last two shots. And he is a 54% shooter on the season. Lucci's wide open from there, but doesn't take it. In the block, Fakes goes the other way on Turpin, and a foul is going to be on Melvin Turpin. That's Kentucky's first person. Kentucky coaches off the bench felt like maybe the block had charged into Turpin. Turpin was leaning back that time. He thought he was charged. Let's watch it one more time. Here's Blop with the basketball. Good fake to the left. He gets Turpin leaning to the left. See the ball go. Then he comes back in. Turpin leaning away from him. They say he bumped him on the shot as he went up. So Uwe Blop will go to the line as Joe Hall looks on from the Kentucky bench. Blop rims out on him. He's not a good free throw shooter, Larry. Just about 57%. Seven foot two, the biggest man ever to play for the Indiana Hoosiers. Got the second one, his first point of the game, and it pulls Indiana within one at 6-5. Kentucky with a lead in the basketball. Let's see if they make some adjustments. Indiana does in their defense to pick up on Dirk Menafield in his outside shooting. Hurt finds himself wide open, goes for the basket, can't score, but he's fouled. They just left Hurt wide open. Did someone lose him in traffic? Well, I think what happened is that Indiana really has a strategy in this area because Hurt really is not a good outside shooter. They're going to back off of him and let him shoot that 15 to 20 foot jump shot because they don't think he can make it. But that time he took it inside and went right through the Indiana defense and drew the foul. Jim Thomas committing the foul. His first three against Indiana now. Kentucky has committed only one. Charles Hurt at the free throw line. The 6'6 senior can hit. He's about a 69% free throw shooter. He had 15 in the first game against Indiana. He's going to set a field goal percentage record for Kentucky. Missed the both free throws, however. Bucci with a rebound for the Hoosiers. Hurt is a 64% shooter from the field, just 69% at the free throw line. Indiana chance to take the lead. Block in against Turpin. Nice reverse move by Uwe Block. Jeff Tommy really was. He got the basketball inside against Turpin. Got him low on the block. Gave him that little fake. He always makes that first fake before he turns and does anything. And he got Turpin leaning and laid it in. I don't think Turpin wanted to commit a second foul. We saw a block in practice yesterday, and he was really working on that hook shot, which has been a big addition to his arsenal. That time, Turpin was sandwiched by two players, somehow got away from the monster duck. That was a real monster duck. He did get away from Block. Pucci was trying to give him some help, and he got through both of them. First two for Melvin Turpin. It's an 8-7 Kentucky lead. Tony Brown, outside shot, falls through. Look at Indiana is really running their offense to perfection. They've got that wing position open. When they run those people underneath, they've had Whitman take the shot out there two times, that time Brown. Brown's basket gives Indiana a one-point lead. Seesaw game in the Mideast Regional. The winner plays the Louisville, Arkansas winner for the regional championship and a trip to Albuquerque. Horde way off the mark on his shot, Brown the rebound. Not a good shot by Derek Horde that time. A lot of traffic inside, and he really forced that one. Bushy. 
Gives it up to Thomas. Feeds back outside to Brown as Master hit the deck. Both teams playing man-to-man defense and good man-to-man. -man. It really is. Both clubs are really getting after each other. The only thing that Indiana has, they've been able to get the shot off on the wing. And there's Bucci. They leave Bucci open, daring him to hit that outside shot. And he cans it. His first two, four of the five Hoosier starters have scored. Indiana with a three-point lead. There's so many good athletes on the floor out there tonight. They all can do something very well, and that's shoot the basketball. Hurt may be the worst shooter on the whole ten players out there, and he's not bad. He's a high percentage shooter, 64%, but most of them inside. There's a guy that's hot. Minifield is three for three. I'm surprised Indiana hasn't made some sort of adjustment to come out and get Minifield because he's hit three shots in a row now, all from pretty good range. He's the leading scorer in the game. He pulls Kentucky within one. Lucci inside Whitman. Baseline jumper up beauty. Randy Whitman with his sixth point. Well, the pace of this game is really quick. Both of these clubs going up and down the floor very quickly, setting their offenses, getting good shots, and it's not because they're getting open. It's because the clubs are playing good defense. They're just running good offensive patterns. In other words, the game living up to its billing so far. Charles Hurt, baseline jumper, air ball. Whitman has it. Hurt missed everything on that one, and Brown brings it into front court for the Hoosiers, who can take their longest lead with a bucket here. This is Block. Hook shot over Turpin. Turpin who kicks it to Whitman. Lucci is open. No good. Block fighting for the rebound. Master and Howard on the floor and picked up by Boucher. Indiana coming up with all the loose balls that come up with the last two. One that Turpin kicked and that one rolled off and Howard's back. This will be the third chance for the Hoosiers. This time down court. Indiana run their patterns. They look to block inside. They're trying to get it inside to go against Turpin. They'll rub off right there. Whitman's trying to get around Minifield, and he's going to draw the foul. There's a foul call on Kentucky, a holding foul. The Kentucky bench wanted a walking call, but it's going to be a foul on Dirk Minifield. The first on Minifield, second against the Wildcats. Here it is again. So the foul call on Minifield. That's the second against Kentucky, the first on Dirk Minifield, and we have a timeout. Who makes the best tiller in the market? The Kentucky Wildcats huddled around Joe B. Hall, their head coach, who's in his 11th year in Lexington. There's Bob Knight, the coach of the Hoosiers. His team right now up by three, 13-10, with about 13 minutes and 20 seconds to play in the first half. The last play was a foul on Kentucky, so it'll be Indiana's ball as we come back to play. Kentucky has its first uh, sub in the game. That man, Joe Hall, has set in Brett Barrett. He wears 24 in a blue uniform. 6'9", 230 pounds, a sophomore from London, Kentucky. Averages three points and two rebounds a game. He replaces Hurt. Kentucky's going to change their defense now. They've gone to, it looks like a 1-2-2. Two, two. Indiana likes to work the perimeter on this. Fine Brown, fine Whitman. Outside shot by Whitman. No good. Turpin with a strong rebound for Kentucky. Here comes Middlefield pushing the ball up court behind the back dribble. Spins in the lane, collides with Block, no call. Turpin picks it up, feeds it back out. Here's Turpin, shot over Block, it's good. Outstanding move by Melvin Turpin that time. He turned and looked at Block's position, faded away with a good soft jump shot. Tom, he can shoot that shot. He's a good jump shooter from 10 to 12 feet. On the season, Turpin a 62% shooter from the field. He pulls Kentucky within one. And we're going to have a foul called on Kentucky, I believe, on Jim Master. He is on Master, that'll be his first, and the third against Kentucky as the team fouls even up. Time out of this basketball game, the first strategy change was made by Joe Hall when he went to this zone defense. I think he felt like his man-to-man -man defense really wasn't wasn't accomplishing what he wanted it to. Indiana was getting a lot of open shots. Kentucky still in the zone defense. Brown over to Thomas. He has it on the wing as Horde slides with him. Indiana tries to attack this zone defense with a 1-3-1. One, one. You see Bucci inside and Blop inside. This is Bucci inside the zone right now. Trying to feed it to Whitman. Knocked out of bounds by Kentucky. It'll go back to the Hoosiers. Pretty tight, compact zone right now being shown by Kentucky. They get back inside that paint in their free throw lane, and they really don't let the ball come in too well. You can see right there, but there's Whitman. Whitman comes up short. He missed everything, but Bucci finds himself with the ball, and on the second effort, gets it done. Barrett got the block on the first try by Whitman second time and there was nobody there to block it he got it off the glass. Steve Bucci the 6'8 senior gets his fourth point of the game and Indiana back up by three. Indiana's going to stay with that man-to-man -man defense. It's a padded defense for Bob Knight. He likes
likes to coach this type of work. And Chuck switching man to man as the night trademark. You've got to think Indiana's concentrating a little bit on Minifield right here. They're going to know where he is. They let Barrett have the shot, and he hits it. They dared him to shoot. He made it his first two. Again, Kentucky pulls within one. Indiana with the basketball. 11 and a half minutes to play in the first half from the Mideast region in Knoxville. By Thomas flashes it back out to Pucci, who can't hit, and Turpin gets the rebound. Turpin is doing a good job of keeping Brock off the offensive board. Yeah, Pucci's going to have to make that shot down in the corner. They're going to let him take it from there. He made one earlier. That time he missed it. Minifield hasn't missed tonight. He's hot. Kirk Minifield is four for four, and Kentucky seesaws back on top, 16-15. He's eating, eating Indiana's defense up right now. He's had four shots, all of them from the outside. Only averaging eight a game is already on his average, but as we said, he's been shooting more often the last two or three games. It's helped Kentucky. Bucci powers to the basket, can't hit, forward with a rebound. Basket here would give Kentucky its longest lead. Indiana really gets back on defense very well. Kentucky not able to penetrate against that defense with any of their fast breaks. In the corner, Farrell. Kentucky's not been able to get a fast break basket. Master had a breakaway at one time, but was fine. Look at Minifield. Missed that one, his first miss of the game. Brown with a rebound for Indiana. Tony Brown falls down, but kept his dribble going. Thomas, nice penetration. Missed the shot, but charged. It'll be a charging foul on Thomas, his second person. Well, Bob Knight is upset about that call right there. He thought that Horde moved inside of Thomas. You see Brown with the basketball right here. He falls down, kicks it to Thomas. Good pass, good alert play. Thomas with the basketball. Good crossover move, went right by Barrett. Horde in great position to draw the charge. It was a good call. Good call. It was a definite charging foul. Here's Charles Hurt back in for Kentucky. He replaces Derek Ford. Kentucky with a one-point lead. Clock shows just over 10 minutes remaining in the first half. Bear up open from 18. He'll shoot it. Rimmed out on him. Went halfway down and came back. Whipping with a rebound. Here's the Hoosiers attack now. Indiana looking to reclaim the lead. Kentucky goes back to man-to-man, -man, Tom. They changed their defense again. When Hurt came back in, they went man-to-man. -man. Whitman misses. Master with an easy rebound for Kentucky off the floor. Minifield lob for two. Oh, what a slam! Now the Turpin took it with one hand. Slammed it through on the spectacular play of the game. Great pass by Minifield to get it up there. And a great catch and slam by Turpin.
six points. He averages six a game. And they're going to let Barrett take a shot from the corner. Look at Bucci and Blop inside. They've really got Turpin covered up in there. You see Barrett has room to shoot if he wants as Bucci sacks back on Turpin. Barrett does make a nice move. Tom, he's going to have to take that shot. If they're going to collapse inside on Turpin, if Bucci's going to come back and help Blop, it's going to leave him open all night. And Barrett has got to take that shot. Barrett off the Kentucky bench has picked up four points. Wildcats again by one. This time playing zone again. Yeah, it looks like they're in a one-two-two two again. More of a matchup maybe than a one-two-two. Two. They're really trying to find out where the players are stationed on the Indiana offense, then they match up from that position. Well, Bucci's really working hard to try to get open in that middle in there. There's Bucci, number 54, right at the foul line at the moment. Inside block. Fakes Turpin, goes up for a shot, blocked by Barrett. Hurt gives it up to midfield in front court. Barrett has done a great job off the Kentucky bench. Right over. Tony Brown with his fourth quarter. Indiana really starting to 
shoot the basketball well now. Kentucky may have to make some adjustments in that zone defense to start covering up those slots because they're getting good, easy jump shots. Joe Hall on your screen right there, not very happy the way his team is playing defensively. Indiana leads by one, 27-26. Jim Master gets it to Turpin. Double team, triple team. Back to Master, can't get a shot away. Turpin tried to save it, back out of bounds. So the Kentucky bench in a bit of anguish as they see their team turn the ball over. It'll be Indiana's basketball when we come back to play. But first, a timeout. Three minutes, 54 seconds to play first half. The score, Indiana 27, Kentucky 26. Big Mac, please. Big Mac's a-coming. Coming right up. We're getting it together. We're making it up to all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese. On a bun with sesame seeds. Big Macs are coming. Pickles, onions, too. Together, we're putting it together for you. Big Mac. McDonald's and you. People have trust in it. It has helped secure the future for many and helped others start over again. For countless families, it is shelter from the unexpected because they know it will be there when they need it most. It stands for affordable protection and service, a symbol of a strong growing company and its family of ages. It's the shield of shelter insurance. For your life, health, home, and car, it's all the shield you'll ever need. Kentucky 72-65 and then who can forget that 1975 game 92-90 the UK won when Indiana was undefeated during the year Indiana had a great basketball team that year Kentucky went on to finish second in the NCAA tournament beaten by UCLA in John Wooden's last game two new players in the game we got Dickie Beal now back in the basketball game and Kenny Walker for Kentucky underneath Beal wears number 11 5'11 170 pounds junior from Covington averages four a game that's Kenny Walker who just uh, got the rebound, bounced it off Burt's head, and it comes to Beal. Walker wears 34, freshman of the year in the Southeastern Conference, 6'8", 190 pounds from Roberta, Georgia, averages seven points and five rebounds a game. Both Beal and Walker have been bothered by injuries. Beal has had a bad right knee, has followed him for some time, and Walker has had back spasms. Minifield from the corner, can't hit. Good block out by Thomas. You see why he's the leading rebounder, even though he's a guard. Perfect fundamental position to get the rebound. Whenever the basketball bounces on the floor and nobody touches it off a missed shot, you know you've done your job. Indiana with the basketball. Hoosiers lead by one. Hurt went for the steal, couldn't get it. Brown misses the shot, fight for the rebound, and a foul underneath. It's going to be called, I believe, on Bucci of Indiana. It is on Steve Bucci. That'll be his second and number six on the Hoosiers. So on the next Indiana foul, we'll shoot one plus one at the Kentucky free throw line. The Wildcats, playing primarily zone, have committed only three. This helps Kentucky, too, and we're inside three minutes of play here in the first half, and Indiana has committed their sixth foul, so they go to the bone as Kentucky does on the next foul. Minifield into Walker, had a little trouble getting the handle, fed it back out. Kentucky showing a little bit more patience this trip down the floor. Barrup, 16 feet good. Brett Barrup off the Kentucky bench for eight points. Outstanding first half for the youngster, came down from New York, now living right outside of, uh, right north of Knoxville here in London, Kentucky. There's an Indiana turnover. Bobby Knight is angry at his players. Look at Knight, the scowl on his face. So Kentucky comes the other way. The Wildcats have the basketball and a one-point lead as Joe Hall calls the offensive play. Rare for Indiana to make top turnovers, Tom. They don't make very many of them during the basketball game. Nicky Beal is open. They dare him to shoot. He won't. Instead, he penetrates and kicks it back out to many field. This is Walker on the low post against Blob. Jump hook is good. He challenged the seven foot two Blob and scored. 6'8 against 7'2 block. Just went up and shot the hook over him. Good play by the young freshman. Backcourt pressure and a double team for the Wildcats. They get it to Bucci in front court. He cross courts to Whitman and Minifield picks him up. Good defensive pressure by Kentucky that time and they got back to help once the ball broke the plane of the half court. Steve Bucci is double teamed to Brown. Indiana's not made a sub 
substitution in the first half. Almost a steal by midfield and a traveling call against Indiana. So they'll turn it over as the Kentucky defense forcing Indiana into mistakes. And that's the second turnover now that Indiana's committed. That time, Tony Brown, watch him go down here. Tom, the violation he is when he's down, he cannot get up. He's got to make the pass, and that's where it happened. He got up off the floor and took that extra step. It's automatic. Bobby Knight doesn't like it, but it goes against his Hoosiers, and Kentucky can take its longest lead. In fact, the longest lead for either team with a bucket here. Beal tries to get it, comes up short. Rebound Brown of Indiana. Beal, not a very good outside shooter, can put that one up and came up way short. Well, he had a good shot. It just didn't go down for him. Whitman looks inside, trying to get block open underneath. Now Bucci and the defense all over him. In fact, they fouled him. It'll be on midfield. Midfield second, only four against the Wildcats. Not a bad foul by Kentucky right there. They can afford to waste a couple. They've got a minute and 17 seconds left to play. So if they want to, they can foul two more times before the half ends. Thomas will throw it in for the Hoosiers. It comes at long range to Brown. Kitchell out. Indiana hurts for depth a little bit, and they've gone with their five starters for the entire first half in just a minute of it remaining. Bucci again is open, and Bucci can't hit it. Rebound, Minifield. Here's Dirk Minifield on the fly. He's got Beal out in front. Minifield to Beal. Goes for the basket. He's fouled. Tom, you can see that play begin to develop once it reached midcourt because Dickie Beal really sprinted down the left side. Red Barrett going out of the basketball game right there. It was a good lane fill that time by Beal. You see Minifield look right, pass left. Beal's there waiting for the basketball. He knows he's got to contend against Blob right there and Tony Brown. Brown's the one who committed the foul. Second foul on Tony Brown, seventh against the Hoosiers. Joe Hall has sent Troy McKinley and Jim Master into the game. It's the first appearance for McKinley. Where's number 40? 6'6", 195 pounds. Sophomore from Independence, Kentucky, averages a point a game. You're looking at Dickie Beal, who will attempt the free throws. Played real well on the summer tour of Japan that this Kentucky team took. And had played a big part in Kentucky's success before that knee injury that hurt his effectiveness here in the latter part of the season. Dickie Beal gets his first two points, and Kentucky has a five-point lead. That's the longest lead by either team. Beal with a little bit more pressure outside that time. They're going to stay in that zone defense. I think Indiana's been bothered by it. To that summer tour of Japan taken by the Kentucky team. One of the players they faced was Uwe Block, who is a West German native and was playing for the West German team in a tournament in Japan. Good pressure by Kentucky right now. They're coming out there. We've got less than 30 seconds to play in the first half. Block counts down to 26-25. Indiana showing patience. They're going to take the last shot of the half. and be all right with him to Whitman. Cross courts it to Thomas. Now down to 13 seconds. Not, not a bad strategy back in play to come out and put pressure on Indiana because it looks like they want to take the last shot. Now they're going to try to push it back inside. Lucci to block. Walker got a hand on it. Knocked it out of bounds with three seconds left. Good defense by the freshman Walker. Big basket right here. You've got to stop Indiana if you're Kentucky from getting that basket going in. Look for a lot to boot your block inside. Thomas and long range round. Is shot up and on its way. Good. As Good the half comes to an end, Tony Brown hits at the buzzer to end the first half of play. That's the end of the first half of play with a score. Kentucky 32, Indiana 29. We'll be back after these messages with our halftime program. Today, Liberty National Bank is more than a bank. Today, we're a new world of convenience. Liberty is Money Systems Interchange, offering a network of money machines across Kentucky and beyond. Liberty is MasterCard, too, anywhere in the world. And Liberty is more offices than any other financial institution in Kentucky. Today, more than ever, there are banks, and there is Liberty. This bud's for everybody who puts in a hard day's work. Yeah, just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do. This Bud's for you. Hard to believe some folks have never tried. Pan pizza? And pizza. Never tried it? Oh, you gotta get out of the house more often. Oh, Lots of cheese. Very observant. Oh. 
Joey, save some for us. <laughs> hey, Joey, you eat better than your bowl. Oh. Pizza. Hey, Joey. Joey. At your hometown pizza. Hut. Earth to Joey. George, <laughs> winter has really punished your car, George. It's going to take a miracle of a sale to get it in shape. Hang on. We're going to Fleener's. Fleener's knows what winter did to your car, so we're having our thank heaven it's spring sale with sinfully low prices on everything from oil filters to shock absorbers. And we'll give you the confidence to fix it yourself. Remember, George, Fleener's helps those who help themselves. Tom Hammond and Larry Conley from Knoxville, Tennessee. The Mideast Regional Semifinals, an excellent first half of basketball. Kentucky leading Indiana by three at intermission. The game living up to its billing. Fast pace, good hard nosed basketball by both teams. Tommy really has been. I think both clubs have played extremely well tonight. You know, early going, it was uh, the good shooting of Minifield, which kept Kentucky in the basketball game, and also Randy Whitman, who shot very well. And Whitman got kind of lost about uh, from the 12-minute mark on in the first half. When Kentucky went to that zone defense after their first time out, we didn't see much of him. And all of a sudden, Brett Barrett came off the bench for Kentucky and had an outstanding first half. Barrett, one of the surprises of the game, he's come off the Kentucky bench to get eight points and also has done a good job defensively, which is certainly not his forte throughout the regular season. He blocked a shot, and it really has been a good first half for, uh, for Barrett, but it had to be because the two starting forwards for Kentucky, Horde and Hurt, have not scored. And they've done a good job of shooting the basketball. I would be very surprised if both these clubs are well into the 50% category when it comes to talk about field goal for shooting stats at halftime. Okay, at halftime, it's Kentucky. Kentucky leading Indiana by three. Let's pause now for a local station break. This is an NCAA Productions telecast. Martha Lane Collins has a plan for education in Kentucky. A tough, no-nonsense plan to help today's students become productive citizens tomorrow. Martha Lane Collins, experience and knowledge from the classroom to the Capitol. We're going to have to make some tough decisions in education. We're going to have to decide how important we feel quality education is for our young people. Martha Lane Collins, Governor. This week at Convenient Pepsi, 16-ounce returnables, just $1.59. The Kentucky Wildcats leading the Indiana Hoosiers by a score of 32 to 29. It's been a close first half of basketball. Kentucky's biggest lead was five points coming just at the end of the first half. In fact, a shot by Brown at the buzzer was able to cut that five-point lead down to only three. Indiana's biggest lead, four points. In fact, the Hoosiers went up four nothing before Kentucky was able to hit the scoring column. So it has been a close first half of basketball. Oddly enough, Kentucky starting forwards, Horde and Hurt, have not scored, but Brett Barrett was able to come off the bench and pick up the slack. He scored eight. Meanwhile, the Indiana forwards, Whitman and Bushy, have combined for 16 of the Hoosiers' 29 points. In fact, it's been the Indiana inside game with Bob coming through with seven also that's been most potent for the Hoosiers. While Kentucky shows a pretty balanced scoring sheet, Bear up off the bench, Turpin with eight, and Minifield with eight to give the Wildcats a three-point lead at halftime. Right now, let's go courtside to Larry Conley. Very exciting first half of the Kentucky leading 32 to 29. And I've got an old basketball coach from Duke University standing here. Vic Bubis is also the commissioner of the Sun Belt Conference and also sits on the NCAA tournament committee. Vic, that was an outstanding first half. Just a great first half. I'll tell you, it was awfully tough defense. They really went at each other. We saw a little bit of everything. And I think that uh, dunk just brought this crowd uh, right to their feet. And they stayed there for a while. Just an outstanding first half of what we're looking for in final 16 basketball. You know, the thing we talked about, Tom and I did at the top of the show, was the fact that these two clubs have such outstanding basketball traditions. Well, they do, and you can see there's so much pride out there. And uh, they got a lot of confidence. Both of them have great coaches, great programs. That's what it's all about, Larry. 
may talk a little bit about the NCAA tournament. Obviously, you expanded your field this year to 52 teams. Are there thoughts about possibly extending it to even more than that in the future? We haven't talked about it. Uh, I don't see any groundswell at this point. However, that type of thing is discussed at the summer meetings that we have. I think we got to take a look at what we've done here, analyze it, and then look at it a little bit more. I would say at this time, just taking a guess, we're probably, I don't know, we're probably going to sit back. Yeah, there's been such a spread of talent throughout the country. There are so many good college basketball teams around the country now. And with the expansion of the format of the NCAA tournament, it really gives a lot of players a lot more opportunity to be seen. And I think that's what's nice about the NCAA tournament, because it does do that for a lot of good teams and players. Well, there's no question about it. The one thing I like about the NCAA tournament, it holds everybody throughout the whole country on the edge of their chair in the conference tournaments. They all think they got a shot at it. And you mentioned the word, uh, I call it parity. There are so many great basketball players in the country, so many great arenas. We got more exposure than ever before. I think we got the greatest thing going. We're right there with the Super Bowl and the World Series and the whole bit. It must be awfully difficult that weekend you're out there in Kansas to have to sit down and look at the basketball teams. Obviously, you've got your computer that you plug into it, but there's also a lot of invariables that go with this thing, and it, it makes the tournament so much more interesting. That Sunday evening is really a nail-biting time for a lot of clubs across the country. Well, I tell you, uh, Larry, that's an agonizing three days for us because there are so many great teams, and I never saw nine people sweat it out like we did this time. I think the committee did a great job under tough circumstances, and, you know, even if a tournament had 64 teams, you're always going to have some disappointments, and we have to be ready for that. Vic Bubas, Commissioner of the Sun Belt Conference, thank you for being with us. Thank you, Larry. And now a message from the NCAA. Higher education today. The NCAA is proud to present this special tour of our nation's colleges and universities. Did you know more than 3,200 colleges, universities, and branch campuses are located in the United States? Approximately 78% of all college students attend public institutions. Women comprise over 6.2 million students, while over 5.8 million men attend college. More than half of all colleges and universities are privately supported by religious denominations, professional organizations, and other groups. Higher education today. Challenging. Motivating the mind. The preceding message provided by the NCAA. At halftime in Knoxville, Tennessee, Kentucky leading Indiana 32 to 29. Let's pause now for a local station break. This is an NCAA Productions telecast. This buzz for everyone who knows they've got what it takes to get the job. This buzz for you, for all you do. The king of fears is coming through. Yeah, just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. Hey, this Bud's for you. Phone Levy's for free estimate on all types of remodeling, including labor. Being number one in radios doesn't mean Goodyear offers you only one radial tire. We give you a choice, and right now we're offering two of our best radials on sale. Goodyear's Tiempo All-Season Steel Belted Radial and Goodyear's Custom Poly Steel Steel Belted Radial. Two different radials for different kinds of drivers. The choice is yours, and so are the savings. Come to Goodyear's Driver's Choice Radio Sale now. Tiempo and Custom Poly Steel on sale now through April 2nd. Save with number one, Goodyear. Arby's Barbecue, it's calling you. Saying dig in to hickory flavored real ribs, smothered in sauce so savory you'll delight in every bite. New Arby's Barbecue, it's calling you. Saying plunge into a platter of meaty, mouth watering ribs, or tender, tangy chicken, or go for the combo. New Arby's Barbecue, it's calling you. In the 
East Regional, Kentucky leading Indiana by three at halftime. Let's take a quick look at some first half stats. Great shooting by both teams. 58% by Kentucky, 50% by Indiana in the first half. At the free throw line, Kentucky 66.7, 50%, one of two for Indiana. Rebounds controlled by Indiana. They had a five rebound edge. Turnovers, the Hoosiers turned it over two more times, and they committed seven fouls to only four for Kentucky. Good shooting, as we said, by both teams in the first half. Wildcats lead by three. Let's pause now for a message from the NCAA. NCAA women's softball. Fast, exciting, competitive. It's more than a game. It's a happening. The 1983 Division I Women's Softball Championship will feature America's premier players May 25th to 29th at Creighton University in Omaha, Nebraska. Attend an NCAA women's softball game near your home and look forward to this outstanding championship. NCAA women's softball. Be part of the excitement. The preceding message provided by the NCAA. With Kentucky leading by three, we'll be back in a moment for the start of the second half after these messages. Looking for high interest rates to land? Then look to Neil Huffman. Right now, all new Neil Huffman cars and trucks in stock are available at an incredible 9% interest with 48-month terms. Choose from our complete line of sporty Datsuns, including Centros, Stanzas, and 280Zs. Or our great selection of dependable Volkswagens, featuring Rabbits and Jettas. Or a rugged Subaru sedan, wagon, or brat. All at 9% with 48 months to pay. Hurry offers for a limited time only. And Neil Huffman will beat the pants off any deal. She dreamed of winning. She wanted to go where only a few men had ventured. Some made it, and some didn't. The last thing they're looking for is a driver who's a housewife from Schenectady with a kid. She challenged them all in the fastest and most powerful sport on Earth. Heart like a wheel. Rated PG. Come to a special sneak preview Saturday, March 26th. Is your car overdue for an oil change? Then here's some welcome news. At Olympic Muffler Centers, you can get a quick lube with top-grade Pennzoil, a Pennzoil filter, and lube job, all for less than if you did it yourself. That's five quarts of premium Pennzoil, a Pennzoil filter, and front-end lubrication, all for Olympic's everyday price of just $8.88. Why do it yourself? Come on into Olympic. We're fast, we're friendly, and we cost less, too. Olympic Muffler. That's the name. There is no other time to plan for the future than in the present. So before tomorrow arrives, make plans to open your individual retirement account at Great Financial Federal. You'll earn a high rate of interest, and there's still time to get tax benefits for 1982. So make your decision today, because if you're like most people, you will run out of time before you run out of excuses. for that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. Buy your Louisville-area hometown pizza huts. And buy Neil Huffman Volkswagen, Subaru, and Datsun on Dixie Highway and Dutchman's Lane in DuPont Circle. Tom Hammond and Larry Conley from 
the Mideast Regional Tournament in Knoxville, Tennessee, with Kentucky leading Indiana by 32-29 at halftime. And as we said, Larry, we expected high shooting percentages despite some good defense. That's what we had that first half. These are two good shooting teams, and they were living up to form in the first half. I think the thing that really uh, changed the whole basketball game around was when Kentucky went to that zone defense with about the 14-minute mark of the first half. It looked like Indiana got a little bit confused on offense. They did get inside the Kentucky zone a couple of times, but uh, it was Kentucky's advantage in the first half, and that's why they're up by three. Randy Whitman was not getting those shots from the corner as he had earlier, and they completely cut him off the latter part of the first half. Here's Thomas taking Master right to the basket as we start the second half. Kentucky's open man-to-man. -man. They get it to block. Barrett comes out to help out on Bach as he got away from Turpin, and Barrett commits the foul. What made that play happen, Tom, was the fact that Melvin Turpin missed the steal. He went for the steal, and it got inside and got away from him. You're going to see Turpin right there away from the basketball. Barrett had nothing to do but foul. That's what he did, and Blop will go for the line for two. And they had a shot only two free throws in the first half, both by Blop. He hit one of them. He's now one for three at the line. Indiana begins the second half with his iron men. Whitman, Bucci, Blop, Thomas, and Brown. They played the entire way for Indiana. Blop hits the second one. He has eight points in the game. Kentucky comes back with Minifield and Master. Hurt, Barrup, and Turpin. The only change from their starting lineup would be Barrup starting at a forward in place of Ford. Barrup picking up eight points in that first half. Here's a lob intended for Turpin from Minifield. Partially blocked by Indiana. And they come down with a steal. Indiana with a chance to tie it with a bucket here. That was Tony Brown that caused that deflection. Blop shoots over Turpin. Barrow bumped out and blocked it, but Blop gets it back. Back out to Brown as they set it up. Kentucky's back in their man-to-man -man defense. Bucci again is open, and he can't hit it. Came up short. Blop and Turpin for the rebound, and a foul is going to be called on Kentucky's Barrow, I believe. The ball actually carried right back in the face of Blob that time, and also Turpin, who was standing on that end. Barrett came in a little bit late, and he calls the foul. Two quick second-half fouls on Brett Barrett, who's playing the game of his life. He is replaced by Kenny Walker. Barrett goes out. Walker is in. Walker, the 6'8 freshman, had a bucket for two points in the first half. Indiana again attacks, down by two. Now they go to that zone defense. They'll stay in that zone after the out-of-bounds play. Brown at the top of the key. In low to Bucci, knocked away and stolen by Dirk Minifield. Good defense at that time by Dirk Minifield to get inside because Bucci was trying to post him. Here's Kenny Walker. Moves for the basket and scores again over Uwe Walker. The strong move by the young freshman from down in Georgia. First Kentucky field goal in the second half is the Wildcats a four-point lead. He's played a minute and a half of the second frame. Turnaround jumper by Thomas won't go. And on the rebound, block fouls Walker. Walker had the big guy blocked off, and Block commits the foul in his second. I think Walker was a little bit surprised that that basketball came off as quickly as it did because when he turned to pick up the rebound, Block was standing next to him. Block, a little bit anxious, pushed him as he went for the ball. And here will be the first Indiana substitution of the game. Number 21 is Winston Morgan, 6'5", 200 pounds, a sophomore from Anderson, Indiana. Averages three points and two rebounds a game. He started about four or five games for Indiana this year. He replaces Thomas. He comes off the bench and gives them good defensive help. He's uh, known for his defensive play. Right now he's on Burke, who hasn't scored a great number of points. Jim Master feeds it to Turpin. He'll take it from 17. Melvin Turpin from outside gives Kentucky its longest lead. Kentucky doing very well at the start of the second half. Right now, they push their lead out to six. Brown on a wing. Winston Morgan, he just came in. Minifield has him. Bucci guarded by Walker with Turpin trying to help out. They go to Block. Turpin has him. Nice move by Block. Missed the shot. Turpin bats it to Minifield. Kentucky break three on three. Minifield, Master pulls up. Jump shot. Good. Pick pass, break basket for Kentucky that time. The lead now is the largest in the game. Kentucky up by eight. When you're looking for a great variety of your favorite music, turn to FM 103, WRKA. On WRKA, you'll hear artists like The Beatles, Yesterday, Billy Joel, Just the way you are. and Air Supply. So, for a great variety of your favorite music from yesterday and today, 
Listen to FM 103. W-R-K-A. Down at Jim Cook Buick Dotson, Jeff and John Cook are battling for the sales championship. John Cook's Buick team, led by their Buick Regal, is scoring points with Louisville's biggest Buick discounts. And Jeff Cook's Dotson team, with the small but quick Nissan Sentra, plays with Kentuckiana's lowest Dotson prices. And when you team up with low overhead, great selection, and big trade allowances, who wins? You do. With the best Buick and Dotson buys in Kentuckiana at Jim Cook Buick Dotson, downtown Louisville at 4th and Breckenridge. Tonight's exciting NCAA action is being sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, the king of beers. Reach for that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. Buy your Louisville area hometown pizza huts. And buy Neil Huffman Volkswagen, Subaru, and Datsun on Dixie Highway and Dutchman's Lane in DuPont Circle. Good pressure. Brown with a good floating play that time. Whitman can't get a shot away. Kentucky has shut down Whitman after Randy picked up eight quick points in the first half. Now they've got Charles Hurt, probably their best defensive player on it. Good pass by Whitman inside. And another good pass. Morgan left it for Block. It'll count, and he's fouled. Good ball handling by the Hoosiers. They get Block an easy basket, and he'll move to the line for a chance at a three-point play. Tom, that's what you call team basketball right there. The ball came in. Look at the inside play right here. Good fake. Right there, Turbin tries to draw the charge. Klopp with the basket. That's the second pass in that sequence. And it was a good play. And Bob Knight happy with his club now. They've cut the gap down to six. Foul was on Kenny Walker. His first third against Kentucky. Klopp now with a total of ten points after that last field goal. Gives him 11. And he has outscored Turpin now 11 to 10. That's the score. Five-point lead for the Wildcats. They have the ball. Someone gets it to Minifield. Minifield says, settle down, we'll set up our play. Clock ticks down to the 17-minute mark. The winner advances to the regional finals and just a win away from Albuquerque. Hurt rebounding the air ball put up by Turpin and his foul. Turpin hit one of those a moment ago, but on the second time came up way short. I think what happened there was he's about two steps outside of his range. The shot that he hit earlier was a little bit closer to the basket. That time he was a little too far out. He was just fortunate that Hurt was there to get the rebound. The foul was on Winston Morgan, his first, the second against Indiana this half. Turpin receives the inbounds pass from Minifield and then returns it to Minifield, who sets up the play. Kentucky leads by five. Minifield penetrates, pulls up with a jump shot. Good. Dirk Minifield having an outstanding game. That's his 10 point. Tom, what made that play happen that time was a Tony Brown slumped off inside and tried to get some help, and they left Minifield wide open at the free throw line. Block surrounded by three blue shirts, kicks it back outside. Around the horn it goes. Brown can't get away from Master. Whitman in the block. Shoots over Turpin. He got it. Beautiful turnaround move by Uwe. Block the seven-foot-two sophomore. Block always gives you that first little ball fake. He'll turn and face up at you, give you a little bit of a turn, and then go straight up. Playing a good basketball game, Uwe Block. Almost a steal by Morgan, but he knocked it out of bounds. It'll go to Kentucky. Remember, Block in the first meeting was outscored 17-0 by Turpin. Watch him, Tom, right here. Here's his play right here. You see that little fake? He always gives you that little fake before he turns around and shoots that jumper. That's good ball thinking right there. Offensively, you want to do that to get the defense back on its heels. Averaging nine a game, Block has already scored 13 in this one. Here's Turpin. He's double teamed. Nice feed to Walker. Can't hit the shot, but he's fouled. Turpin sensed the uh, weak side help on the pressure and dished it off to Walker. Well, he did. Block tried to make the steal that time. Turpin received the basketball. Bucci from the offside gave good help. When he did that, Bucci left Walker wide open, and he drew the foul. Walker goes to the line. It was a smart move right here. You see Master with a pass. See Block go by. There's Bucci with a help, but it leaves Walker right open. He draws the shot right there and goes up and go to the line for two. Foul was on Winston Morgan, the second foul on Morgan. That's three against the Hoosiers this half. Southeastern Conference freshman of the year, Kenny Walker. If there's a flaw in his game, Larry, it's his free throw shooting. He's only a 66% free throw shooter. But a young man that's shown a tremendous amount of promise his first year in a Kentucky uniform. Kentucky's going to stay in that man-to-man -man defense, and they still got Charles Hurt guarding Randy Whitman. Five points in the game for Kenny Walker. Kentucky is up by six. Walker doesn't show any signs of the bad back bothering in this game. 
Christian Morgan guarded by Dirk Minifield, the Wildcats man to man. Whitman can't get his shot away. He hasn't gotten a shot in the second half, Larry. There's a good double screen low. They got Whitman free, but Hurt fought, fought through the double screen and got to the corner before he had a chance to go up with it. In fact, I don't believe he had a shot the latter stages of the first half either. Block, block by Turk. simply took it straight up. Look, straight up with a basketball. That time, Turpin was waiting on him. So what you're saying is the fake has been awfully effective. Let's watch it again from uh, this angle again. No fake. No fake. Was able to he went play. straight up that time, and Turpin was waiting on him. And you see Block with a foul right there on Kenny Walker. It's the third foul on Uwe Block. Here's Jim Thomas back into the game for Indiana as Winston Morgan goes out. So Indiana's starting five intact. 15 minutes, 15 seconds to play. Kentucky leads by six. Master inside. Turpin against Block. Back out to Master. Drives baseline. Jump shot. He got it. Good play that time by Jim Master. Randy Whitman shutting down to Bloomington in that December game. He was one of five from the field, but not that time. He took it to the baseline, got the field goal. He has eight in this game as Kentucky equals its longest lead at eight. Indiana jumped out to a 4 nothing lead, but Kentucky came back, and the Wildcats have been in command most of the way, though not putting Indiana away by any means. Indiana very patient on offense. They're going to work to get their good shot, push the ball inside. Pretty hook by Bucci won't go, though. Tap by Block, no good. Bucci got a hand on it, saved it to Thomas. Go inside again to Block. That time he faked and drew the foul from Melvin Turpin. There's the fake, Larry. You know, even though we talk about that, it, it's an insignificant factor in a basketball game if you turn around like that and just shoot the basketball. But oftentimes the defense reacts to what the ball looks like. If you show the basketball, look at Block. A little bit of a fake that time. Turpin took it. He drew the foul. Got the basket almost to fall, but he goes to the line for two. That fake is very important to get Turpin back on his heels. Second foul on Melvin Turpin. Four against Kentucky this half. shooting teams. Indiana led the Big Ten in field goal percentage, 52.3%. Kentucky led the Southeastern Conference, 55.3%, which was second in the nation. Two good shooting basketball teams. In fact, Indiana also led the Big Ten in free throw percentage. Whitman, again, it won't go, and a good strong rebound by Hurt. He was sandwiched between two Indiana players, but went up and took it down with a vengeance. Master Hester. His follow shot is good. Great shot by Melvin Turpin. He was off balance when he got the rebound. He was off balance when he took the shot, and he still got it to go through the court. And Kentucky has a 45-36 lead. The nine-point advantage, the biggest of the game. Whitman, he got it. That's the Randy Whitman we're used to seeing. The Big Ten scoring champion there with a 19-point average just went up and just knocked it down. That's the 10th point of the game for Randy Whitman, his first two of the second half. The 6'6 senior from Indianapolis, Indiana's leading scorer now. Leading scorer, 19 a game. Walker, turnaround jumper is good. Tom Kentucky's having an awful lot of success taking the basketball in low. They're getting it both to uh, Turpin and also to Walker. The Wildcats hit 58% the first half. Got to be around that mark in the second half as well. 
Kentucky as Blop puts up a hook shot that won't go. Blop will return to the Indiana free throw line. Foul's going to be on Minifield. Dirk Minifield has committed his third personal foul. He's the first Kentucky player in foul trouble. As Kentucky is having success inside, it also is Indiana. Blop right there with a good pass to the inside. Tried to wheel on Turpin, and it was Minifield who got him across the arm. Kentucky gets two fresh guards in the game. Dickie Beal is in, and Roger Harden, number 23, making his first appearance in the Wildcat lineup. 6'1", 170 pounds, a freshman from Valparaiso, Indiana. Blop again misses at the free throw line. Uve having problems with his free throws tonight. He's attempted eight free throws, the only Indiana player to shoot a free throw, and he's hit four. He got the second one, however. Kentucky lead to eight. Kentucky with quite a few Indiana players on, their, on its team. Jim Master from Fort Wayne. They also have Roger Harden from Valparaiso and Tom Heights from Hamilton. Great shot by Kenny Walker. He took it inside. And again, Tom, they're pushing the ball to the inside and trying to work on Indiana's defense in there. Walker has nine points. Kentucky getting great play off the bench from Walker and Barrett. for a free estimate on all types of remodeling, including labor. You're looking at the remarkable new Fisher's Hamlet. Remarkable because it may be the leanest ham you'll ever taste. 93% fat-free, yet full of flavor and natural juices from the first slice to the very last. So if you like ham that's lean and juicy, you're going to love Fisher's new Hamlet. 93% fat-free. Totally delicious. Look for Paramount Lights in your grocery store and give them a try. With one-third fewer calories, they really are beautiful pickles to keep you beautiful. Bumblebee! For genuine Mexican food at the sign of the cactus with four great locations in Louisville and New Albany. Humbleweed! Bobby Knight's defense is known for its all-side defensive help. We'll see Steve Bucci come across the lane to help right there. And look who it leaves open. Kenny Walker, who's having an outstanding second half. He's got nine points in the second half. And 11 for the game off the Kentucky bench. They also had Barrett come off the bench to pick up eight in the first half. Great depth for the Kentucky Wildcats, a luxury that Bobby Knight does not have over on the Indiana side. Indiana gets the sub in the game. It's Mike Giome from Newark, Ohio. He's a 6'8", 220-pound freshman, averaging two points a game. There's the Kentucky bench. Great assist on that last play from Dickie Beal to Kenny Walker, giving the Wildcats a 10-point edge. Interesting that Kentucky has stayed in their man-to-man -man defense in the second half, too. They've really put the pressure on Indiana. Uwe Block goes to the bench for the Hoosiers. He has four fouls. He's Indiana's leading scorer with 15 points. Indiana taking their time, trying to find Whitman. He just can't shake Hurt right now. Charles 
was hurt, the best defensive player on the Kentucky team, doing a good job. So Giome comes in and hits a quick uh, jump shot. He wasted no time at all, Larry. He was a freshman. He was the higher player of the year in 1982. Came off the bench and didn't wait very long. He just got his first shot up and got it down. That cuts the Kentucky lead back to eight. It's 51-43 Wildcats as the clock ticks down to the halfway mark in the second frame. Master guarded by Whitman. Spinning move. Can't get a shot away. Gives it up to Turpin. Turpin shoots over Giome. He got it. Well, Giome is just too small to handle. A little jump hook by Turpin. Well, they're really forcing the ball inside, Tom. We talked about it before the game even started tonight. If they get the ball inside to Turpin, it could be a long evening for the Hoosiers. And right now, Kentucky's having success doing that. Turpin with 14 points. Here's Whitman moving for the basket. And will not go, but a foul on Charles Hurt of Kentucky. Kentucky starting forwards. Horde, who hasn't played that much and still has a hurt ankle. And Hurt have not scored, although Hurt has done an excellent defensive job. Well, he has. This is one of the few times that Randy Whitman's been able to get inside away from Hurt. That time he almost got the basket to go in, but he goes to the line for two free throws. Even though Kentucky's starting forwards have not scored, they've gotten great play off the bench from Walker and Barrett. There's Whitman at the free throw line. As, we, as we've said, he is the first Indiana player other than Block to attempt a free throw. Whitman ready for his second shot. Got them both. The only Indiana player to start every game this season and a first-team All-American by the U.S. Basketball Writers Association. He has 14 points. He pulls Indiana two closer. They're down by eight with 9.40 to play. Kentucky really running their offense, waiting until those two big players, Walker and Turpin, can establish their post positions inside. They're really trying to force the ball in there. Beal is in some trouble. Gets rid of it to Master. Kentucky has committed seven fouls this half, so Indiana will shoot the bonus for the final nine minutes. Turpin off the glass again. Nobody big enough to handle him. He backed it home. That was a good lob pass from Jim Master right over the head of Steve Pucci that time to Turpin to get him to enable him to get loose to shoot that jumper. Bobby Knight really in a dilemma now. Block has four fouls, but nobody else is able to handle Turpin. He's got such a size advantage. This is going to be a foul on Dickie Beal as the Indiana penetration draws the first foul on Beal. Watch it one more time. Dickie Beal all over Tony Brown right here. Kind of falls away from him. They both go to the deck. The foul occurred right there as he went up for the basket. Tony Brown will be at the Indiana free throw line, a starter in 17 games this season. Number one in assists on the Indiana team, averaging nearly four a game. Good free throw shooter, shoots 82%. He hit 20 in a row earlier this season. And he got that one. He was a three-year starter at Chicago De La Salle High School, where he averaged 16 points, six rebounds, and eight assists as a senior. Ready for his second shot. Shooting for point number eight in the game. He got it. Tony Brown having a good game. He averages five points a game. He's already three over his average. And 110 assists coming into the game, but has taken up some scoring slack. Thomas has not scored in the game. Eight-point lead for Kentucky. Less than nine minutes remaining. Try to get it to Walker. Good defense by the Hoosiers. Out of bounds to Indiana. Indiana with good defense that time. They surrounded Walker. Couldn't make the pass inside to it. Now Indiana has a chance to cut it to six. Tony Brown against Beal. Nice move by Brown. Feeds it back to Thomas. Over to Whitman. Shot on the way. No good. Rebound Walker of Kentucky. Quick out to Beal. Beal pushes the ball up court. <laughs> Master circled underneath the basket, got to the corner, Beal got him the ball. Kentucky shooting well, Kentucky handling the ball well. It's been an excellent game for the Wildcats. Oh, good play that time by Tony Brown. And heads up play by Steve Thomas. He knew he was in trouble. Jim Thomas knew he was in trouble, came and helped him. Beal had a hand on that pass, but Bucci's able to save it for the Hoosiers. Indiana down by 10 with eight minutes to play. Whitman, head shoot over Hurt, gives it up to Tony Brown. Jim Thomas looking for his first two. Good. Maybe that's the signal right there for Indiana to get on track. That time, Jim Thomas got his first basket. That cuts the Kentucky lead to 8, 57-49. Bobby Knight very encouraging with his club. Now he says, come on, we got to get going. They're down by 8. We've got about 7.40 to play. Master. Back out to Hurt. Master takes it back. They're going to leave Beal open. They don't think he can make that shot from out there. Look at Tony Brown all the way back inside. He's doubling up inside against Turpin. In fact, there's Mike Giomi. And so with a big lead, eight points, Beal just backs it out. Says, well, come get me. Here's 
Mavericks master goes up for a jump shot off the mark no good rebound Indiana with that lead Larry why wouldn't Beal just back it out and make him come out again well, I think Joe Hall was trying to signal to his young guard to get it back out there and do just that turn around jumper by Giome is good off the bench for four points the freshman it's a 57-51 game as Indiana moves within six Indiana making a little bit of a run in Kentucky right here let's see if they pull the ball out and force Indiana to come out and get them Hoosier faithful whooping it up in Knoxville. Their team has been as down by as many as 10. They've come within six now. Kentucky with the basketball and 6.45 remaining. Joe Hall says to Dickie Beal, back it out. So Beal does back it out, and as you see on that shot, nobody even close to it. Now Brown's got to come out, which opens up the inside. They're trying to get the ball to Turpin. Charles Hurt, and nobody with him. Now Thomas comes out. Hurt takes it into the corner, trying to get it to Walker. He can't. Instead, he'll feed it back outside, but not in time. Five seconds call. That'll turn it over to Bob Knight's Indiana team. Joe Hall didn't like the call. Five seconds on Hurt, and it's a Kentucky turnover. Hurt got in trouble. He got in the corner over there, and he didn't have anywhere to go. Master tried to come and help him, but when you're in the corner over there, you really can't go get the basketball because you're going to be in as much trouble as the guy who's got the ball. Master needed to back out of there, but it was too late. Minifield back in for Kentucky. Master goes to the bench. Indiana can pull within four with a bucket here. Big basket for Indiana right now. They need to have this one to keep their momentum going. Whitman shoots. Got it! That brings the Hoosier throng. They're on their feet now. Four-point lead for Kentucky. Indiana has fought from 10 back to come within four, 57-53. Whitman with 16 points in the game. I don't think anyone sitting in this place tonight felt like that this game would be a blowout. Both clubs playing very, very well. Here's Dickie Beal for Kentucky. Brown makes a swipe at him, but Beal keeps it going, and now he'll force someone to come out and get him again. Now they've got Whitman on Beal. Beal tries to move against him, but can instead comes to Walker at long range. Walker hands it to Minifield. Kentucky with its two quick ball handling guards in the game at the moment, Beal and Minifield. Uve Block back in the game with four fouls, guarding Turpin and getting help right now from Whitman. Well, Whitman and Block have got Turpin surrounded inside there. Dickie Beal's just going to pull it back out and make Randy Whitman come out. And here's the warning from official Hank Nichols. He warns Indiana they've got to come out and play defense. And if they don't, it'll be a technical foul. Here's Turpin over Block. No good. Rebound Hurt. Back out to Minifield. Good, good offensive rebound. Great offensive rebound by Charles Hurt that time to keep Kentucky's offensive alive. Less than five minutes to play. End into Turpin. Three white shirts around him. Gets it back outside the minifield. Saved it before he went out of bounds. Bob Knight wanted a call for Indiana. Didn't get it. And again, they look inside the Turpin. Kentucky's going to take a timeout. I think they need to talk about what they want to do offensively. All right. Kentucky will set the strategy for the final four minutes, 36 seconds of the game. Bob Knight working the officials a little bit. His Hoosiers trail by four. We'll be back in a moment. You know, one of the big advantages of First National's Ready Access Investment Account and Immediate Access Checking Account over the older money market funds offered by brokers is safety. Your First National accounts are insured to $100,000 with the added safety of the region's largest and strongest bank. That's safety no brokerage firm can offer, safety no other savings institution can match, and it's another reason the big difference in money market accounts is First National Bank. Isn't now the time to make your move to First National? Hard to believe some folks have never tried. Pan pizza? At Pizza Hut. Never tried it? Oh, you gotta get out of the house more often. Oh, Lots yeah. of cheese. Very observant. Oh. Joey, save some for us. <laughs> Joey, eat better than your bowl. Oh. So, uh, how do you like pan pizza? Joey, Joey. It's your hometown pizza hut. Earth to Joey. Finals in Knoxville, Tennessee. That's the score. Kentucky leads Indiana by four with four minutes, 36 seconds to play. And it's everything we expected it to be, a good basketball game. Kentucky got up by 10 in the second half. Indiana's closed the gap. Now they're down to four. Kentucky man on hand here in Knoxville, as is the IU. Music section, there's the Indiana band across the way. A lot of red-clad Indiana 
fans here, a lot of red clad Louisville fans here too, in anticipation of the second game, which matches the Louisville Cardinals and the Arkansas Razorbacks. Kentucky's basketball. We saw a bit of a stall from Kentucky just before the last timeout. We'll see the strategy now. It might be a little early to go to the stall. Maybe Kentucky ought to go ahead and try to run their offense to get a good shot. I guess more than a stall, it was the fact that they wanted to pull their ass out to get an open inside like that to Kenny Walker for the easy one. And it opened up inside that time, and they got it to Walker. They've really forced the ball inside against Indiana's defense, and they've had a lot of success during this game. Walker with 11 points in the second half, 13 for the game. Goes back out to six as Indiana operates again patiently on offense. Now an even four minutes left on the clock. There's Whitman in the corner. See Hurt get to him. Charles Hurt is a very, very quick player. He can recover very quickly on defense. You may have a step on him, but you're going to have to keep that step because he comes back. Blob got open inside and it bounced in for him. Uwe Blob got a step on Turpin to the hoop. And as Kentucky is having success against going inside the Indiana defense, also is Indiana having success against Kentucky's defense. In fact, Block has outscored Turpin 17 to 16. Kentucky by four with the basketball. Block shows three and a half. Inside Turpin, fakes and walks. There was no question about that call right there. All three officials raised their hand and blew their whistle. It was Melvin Turpin with a walk. An obvious walk, you'll see it again. To one giant hop. And here's an Indiana turnover. We come back to live action, and Indiana throws it away, missing a golden opportunity to pull within two. Bobby Knight came out of his coat on that. Wouldn't be very surprised to see Kentucky maybe pull it out now and run a little bit of clock as they're down to that almost that three minute mark. And they set up in their double stack configuration. We'll see if they try to run a little clock now. They get it inside of Turpin. Turn around shot is no good. Block with a rebound. Turpin has been hitting those, but that one will not go. And Indiana with the ball. Less than three minutes to play. They can pull it in two. Whitman got it. What a great move by Randy Whitman on the baseline. When you need the guy to come forth and score for you, it's going to be the young fellow, your Randy Whitman. 18 points in the game for Randy Whitman. Kentucky's 10-point lead. Cut down to two. Two and a half minutes to play. Here's Minifield from Kentucky to Walker. Indiana really making a run right now. Here's a charge. Indiana's going to get it back. Good defensive position by Bucci. Minifield called for the charge. That's the fourth personal foul on Dirk Minifield. And it sends the ball the other way. It'll be Indiana's ball. Watch this move right here. Steve Bucci with good defensive position. Minifield ran over him right there. Two minutes, 25 seconds to play. Indiana with a chance to tie the game. Tony Brown for the Hoosiers. Master has him. Master back in for Beal in the Kentucky lineup. Indiana trying to work inside to Block. Block back out to Bucci. This is Whitman open. No good. Rebound by Thomas. He goes up, blocked by Walker. And Minifield has it for Kentucky. Thomas had no chance that time. Turpin and Walker were both waiting like cats in the lair. And the freshman jumping jack able to get a hand on it. And Kentucky with a ball in front court calls a timeout with one minute, 56 seconds showing on the clock. And the Wildcats leading by two. Well, Indiana fortune at that time. The miss by Whitman, but Thomas there for the offensive rebound. But he had the 6'11 Turpin and the great leaper 6'8 Kenny Walker there. Walker got a piece of it. And now Kentucky with a ball leading by two with less than two minutes. What will the strategy be? Tom, Kentucky's got to go to a stall game now. They're inside two minutes of play. They can run the ball out there. They've got good ball handlers. Both Master and Menifee can handle the basketball. They can pull Turpin out of there if they need to. Bluff, unaccustomed he is, as he is to coming out to the free throw lane area or higher. Turpin, pretty familiar with that area. They can get the ball to him. He's the release point. On the other hand, Indiana's going to have to put on a lot of pressure in this final minute and 56 seconds because they're going to get a turnover from Kentucky. The foul situation is interesting right now because Kentucky has committed seven, so they're in the one and one Indiana is. But right now, Indiana has only committed five fouls, so they have one to give up before Kentucky can go to the line for their one and one. So Indiana can gamble. They can go for the steal, and if they commit the foul, no harm done. Well, it's been just exactly the kind of game we talked about. We thought it would be just like this. Both of these clubs came in here with excellent traditions. They keep playing the way they have throughout this entire basketball game, and the pressure has been very intense. Kentucky's biggest lead was at 10, but Indiana's made a good run at them here in the second half. Here's 
that last play now. Whitman on the outside shot. It won't go. Thomas has good position for the rebound. But watch Walker get a hand on it. Look at Minifield out of bounds. He had to step back in bounds to get the basketball. So it'll be Kentucky's basketball. The Wildcats playing one stretch in the second half here. Nearly flawless execution. Built a 10-point lead. The Indiana has come storming back. The Hoosiers trail by only two. Minifield lobs it into Turpin, who hands it back to Minifield. Clock ticks down. Now a minute 50. Minifield, penetration. Master Ooh, comes out Thomas to get it. Almost with a steal right there against Master. Kentucky is definitely in the delay, Larry. Yeah, they're going to run some clock. You see their delay. Hurt and Turpin both right there on the, on the lanes extended. One of them breaks out, and the other one fills his spot. Minifield's going to control the basketball, and it's going to be Tony Brown with the responsibility to try to force that turnover. Now Master pops out, and Minifield takes his place. It's a 1-2-2 two, two setup. The Kentucky's worked the clock down to a minute 25. Master takes up his dribble. That's what you don't want to do. Turpin comes to help him, knocked out of his hand, out of bounds to the Wildcats. Got to keep your dribble going. Well, I think Joe Hall was up signaling. He said, look, if you get in trouble over there, call a timeout. We were in the corner, couldn't go anywhere. They were fortunate to get the basketball back. It went off an Indiana player. Bob it into Turpin. Minifield takes it back. A minute 16 on the clock. Kentucky leads by two. Minifield all the way. Three players come to cut him off. He kicks it back outside. Jim Master guarded by Jim Thomas. This is Walker. Back to Master. One minute to play. Very crucial now. Kentucky take care of the basketball. Indiana's got to force the turnover. Indiana still with a Look foul. Look for the foul. Look for the foul. Minifield double team. Got rid of it to Master and a timeout taken by Kentucky with 49 seconds showing on the clock. Good time for a timeout right there. The thing you've got to expect from Indiana is when we come back on the floor for play, they're going to have to look for that, that foul or that timeout again. All right, timeout. We'll be back in a moment. Kentucky leading Indiana, 59-57. Let's go shopping for our new car tonight. Nah, I'm tired of looking, and we just don't have the money right now. Ralph just bought a new car at Hannon Oldsmobile, and he said they were so nice, real professional, and he got the price he wanted. Hannon? Aren't they by GE on Fern Valley? Ralph says they really earn their great reputation. Come on, let's go to Hannon tonight. Okay. Hannon seems like our kind of place. Buy now for free extended service agreement and 11.9% financing at Hannon, Fern Valley at Old Shepherdsville Road. What's so big about Target's big sale? Big savings. Save big on ColecoVision. Bring all the fun of arcade games right into your home for only $169.99. With push-button keyboard and eight-direction arcade-type controllers, you get the most accurate gameplay ever. Plus, ColecoVision has an expansion module that accommodates Atari 2600 game cartridges. Expansion module sold separately. ColecoVision is target big sale priced at just $169.99. Save big now during the big sale at Target. Kentucky leads Indiana 59-57 with 49 seconds to go. Tom Hammond, Larry Conley, Knoxville, Tennessee, the semifinals of the Mideast Regional. Wildcat cheerleaders, their team in the driver's seat. But that 49 seconds can be awfully long, Larry. It can be very, very long. Right now, Kentucky with the basketball and the lead. They can afford to run some more clock. Indiana probably is going to try to take this foul within the next 10 to 15 seconds. And it looks like... Uh, we're going to have another timeout, this one taken by Indiana. We're holding the ball for 49 seconds against probably the best defensive man-to-man -man team in America is no easy task. Well, right now, Indiana's going to put a great deal of pressure on Kentucky when they come back on the floor. They've got to, and even if they commit the foul, which will be their sixth foul, it will be just a common foul. Kentucky will not go to the line. But Kentucky has an opportunity now to run some clock, draw the foul, and then hope that they get fouled once more. We've got to start thinking about personnel that they might foul. If Indiana's looking at those figures over there, obviously Kenny Walker's going to be one of the players they're going to look to. Walker only a 66% free throw shooter. 13th NCAA appearance by Indiana, 29-8 and eight in NCAA action. They've won four championships, two under Bobby Knight. For Kentucky, their 29th NCAA championship. They're 44 and 24 in tournament play. They've won five championships, one under coach Joe B. Hall. Indiana, 15 Big Ten championships. Kentucky's 34 Southeastern Conference championships. And they have fought down to only two points separating them with 49 seconds to play. 
despite the fact we've had back-to-back -back timeouts, Kentucky takes a little extra time and the official has to go over to get them back out on the court. I think both clubs have had an opportunity to talk about what they're going to do in the final 49 seconds of this basketball game. But no matter what you talk about in that huddle, it's got to be the execution of the players on the floor. The guys who are playing the offense and the defense. And right now, it gets, it gets down to these people in blue and white shirts. Sometimes this inbounds play can be the trickiest of all. Last time, Minifield just lobbed it to 6'11 Turpin. We'll see what they do this time. Turpin breaks in backcourt and easily is able to get the pass. He hands it off to Minifield and brings it back into front court with 44 seconds remaining. This is Minifield. Winston Morgan in the game for Indiana. Master Thomas almost had a steal. Master fouls, but that's only the sixth against Indiana. And they ran 10 seconds off the clock right there. Now Kentucky in position to be able to draw the foul and go to the line for the one and one. And again, they've got the ball out of bounds on the side. Let's see how they run their out of bounds play again. Bucci back in for Indiana. Coach Bob Knight with the last word for him. Kentucky has gotten Derek Horde into the game, too. Horde, an excellent free throw shooter, 83%, hasn't scored in the game. Kind of a tough situation to put a young man into the game right now who hasn't been in there. This time, they bounce it to Horde, who gives it back to Minifield. Now 36 seconds remaining. Foul on Pucci. It'll send Minifield to the line. Let's see if they call it an intentional two-shot foul. It will be one plus one. Third foul on Bucci, seven against Indiana. Dirk Minifield at the line will shoot one plus one. His first appearance at the free throw line. There's Bob Knight. He sends Bucci, or rather a block back into the game, and Morgan will go out. A little bit of strategy here. You want to get your big guy in on the free throw line so that if the ball does come off, if Minifield misses, block bigger than any player on the floor at 7-2 and grab the rebound. Big free throw for Dirk Minifield right here. Former Kentucky Mr. Basketball, he got it. Dirk Minifield, the all-time assist leader at the University of Kentucky, came in with 636 assists. Charles Hurt comes back in for Kentucky to play defense as Derek Horde goes out. Big free throw here. Minifield with 11 points in the game, shooting, and no good. Turpin battles for the rebound and tap it to Minifield. And a foul to get on Indiana. Melvin Turpin with the offensive rebound, perhaps the biggest play of the game. Well, he kept the basketball alive. He was fighting inside that time with Steve Bucci. They both went up and slapped the ball around, and he got it back to Minifield. Minifield was the one who pulled the basketball down. Watch it again. Minifield missing the free throw, but Turpin right there. Isolate on Minifield. You see Turpin knocking it back outside, and Brown commits the foul. Let's go back to the free throw line. Dirk Minifield again. 32 seconds left. Yeah, it came off. No good. got Master with a rebound. Jim Master able to slip along the baseline and pick it up for Kentucky. 25 seconds to play. Kentucky clinging to a two-point lead. Hurt is fouled. It'll be one and one at the line for Charles Hurt. Bobby Knight has seen the chance that two missed free throws go awry as Kentucky first with Turpin, then with Master, has come back up with the basketball. Charles Hurt walking around now. He doesn't want to walk up to that line. I think that's a smart move. Don't go up there, get tense and tight, walk around. Chance to relax, be cool. Hurt's going to walk around again. Indiana with another substitution. And Tony Brown coming back to get his position on the free throw line. Bob Knight there watching. All he can do is wait and see what Charles Hurt's going to do with these free throws. Hurt, who had 15 points in the first game against Indiana, has not scored. He got that one his first point of the game. He's only a 69% free throw shooter, but he got a pressure pack free throw there. And this could be a real big one. It's a four point Kentucky lead now. Kentucky had a three-point lead after Minifield made one free throw. Hurts free toss makes it a four-point lead. He can put it at five. It's good. That's a big one. That's three trips down the floor. Indiana's got to make. They've got to push the ball quickly. Five-point Kentucky lead. Now 16 seconds remaining. Brown against Master. Over to Thomas. His shot. No good. Yes, good. It fell through for Thomas. Only the fourth point of the game for Thomas. And Indiana quickly calls a timeout with nine seconds remaining. So Kentucky with a three-point edge and nine ticks in the clock left. Right now, all Indiana can do is foul if they can't make the steal on the inbound pass. Kentucky's got to look for a possible run out because Indiana will overplay. They'll try to come up. All right, timeout. Nine seconds left. Kentucky leads it by three. McDonald's is really turning breakfast around and giving you a fast break. We'll serve you scrambled eggs and an English muffin for less than a dollar. Or three delicious hotcakes for less than a dollar. 
or right now, our famous Egg McMuffin for less than a dollar. Now that's a break. And we'll serve it all up in a hurry. Now that's a fast break. And that's how we turn breakfast around at McDonald's. The Kentucky Wildcats huddled around Coach Joe B. Hall. Well, Kentucky missing some crucial free throws, but nevertheless in the driver's seat. Just to recap what happened, Dirk Minifield went to the line, hit his first free throw to give Kentucky a three-point lead, but then he missed on his second free throw. Melvin Turpin, however, tapped it back outside. Minifield was fouled again. He missed again, but Jim Mester was able to sneak in along the baseline to get the rebound, and Kentucky controlled once more. Then Charles Hurt was fouled. He hit two free throws. Indiana scored a field goal, and it's Kentucky by three with nine seconds to play. Both clubs taking a lot of time in the huddle. Boy, they've got to talk about these final nine seconds. Kentucky, obviously, all they need to do is get the basketball inbounds. Then they're going to commit a foul. Indiana has got to foul. But Indiana also has got to press the basketball, not allow it to come in. Both are good free throw shooting teams. Kentucky is a team, 72.1%. Indiana, much better, or not much better, but better, 74.7%, which led the Big Ten. However, right now, it's the Kentucky free throw percentage that will matter because Indiana, with only nine seconds left, will have to foul. They'll go for the steal off the inbounds pass. If they don't get it, they'll have to foul. And he's going to put Derry Cord in the basketball game right now. Cord's come in, and they've taken Charles Hurd out of the game. Hurd, a little bit better free throw shooter, but Hurd made those two. I don't know if I wouldn't have him in there. Here's Minifield. Gets it in to Turpin. Back to Minifield. Heads up court. Gets it to Walker. Time's running out. Five seconds left. Here's Master. He's fouled by Bucci. It'll be a two-shot intentional foul with only three seconds left. Kentucky Braves celebrating, and many of the Kentucky fans grouping it up here at the Stokely Athletic Center. Familiar territory for the Wildcats, who play here once every year against the Tennessee Volunteers. They've not had much success. Only one win in Coach Hall's 11 years against Tennessee here, but it's been friendly environs this evening. Jim Master will shoot two at the Kentucky line. He can seal it up right here. Masters three for three at the strike tonight. He has 11 points in the game. Kentucky all backed up. They'll just let Indiana score if need be with three seconds remaining. Masters sights the free throw again. Sends it on its way. The Indiana native got them both. Kentucky leads it by five. Here's Brown with a long shot of the horn. No good. And Kentucky has won it. The Wildcats will advance to the finals of the Mid-East Regional after beating Indiana 64-59. to So that's the horn ending the game. Kentucky beating Indiana by a final score of 64-59. to As Coach Joe Hall leaves with a smile on his face, Melvin Turpin congratulated by Wildcat teammates and Kentucky cheerleaders. It was an excellent basketball game. Fought tooth and nail for the Wildcats and the Hoosiers. And Kentucky coming out on top by a five-point margin here in Knoxville. The Wildcats will play on Saturday afternoon against the winner of the Louisville-Arkansas game. That'll be for the regional championship and a trip to Albuquerque, New Mexico. Indiana scored the first four points of the game. They led Kentucky 4-0. That four-point lead, however, would be their longest lead of the game. Kentucky came storming back. Kentucky built a five-point lead in the second half. At intermission, they were up 32-29. Kentucky up by as many as 10 in the second half. Indiana came roaring back. They got within two, but Kentucky holds on to win it by a final score of 64-59. So the Indiana Hoosiers will close their season with a record of 24 and 6. Kentucky still alive in tournament play. The Wildcats upping their mark for the season to 23 and 7. Right now, let's go courtside where Larry Conley has the winning coach, Joe B. Hall of Kentucky. I have Joe B. Hall. They win 64 to 59 over the Hoosiers of Indiana. Joe, that was a great basketball game. Well, it was. Our kids played it real well. Larry. They uh, followed our game plan perfect. They played with good patience. They played excellent defense. Charlie Hurd did a great job on Whitman in the second half, which was really important to us. Kenny Walker uh, had not been playing well. I thought he had a good game. Uh, Dirk played good. Jim played good. Everybody had a fine ball game, and it took them to beat a fine Indiana team. I about lost my voice. I can tell you've lost your voice. I you, you started out in a man-to-man -man defense, and after that first time out in the first half, you went to the zone defense. Was there a reason for that? Well, we, did, we just didn't feel we were covering Whitman good with Dirk. 
And uh, we wanted to try the zone, but I thought the key was going back to the man in the second half. Well, you did. You went man to man for the entire second half. Well, it, it worked good for us. We went, we went zone just a couple of times. We chased Whitman a little right there in the last. We just wanted to disrupt whatever they were going to try to do to us right in the last. As well as Walker was playing and also Turpin inside, it looked like you were trying to really push the ball inside to those two guys. Well, we were trying to. And they were really dropping off of some of our players. Brett Barrett had a great first half, hit some key baskets for us. Jim Masters' steal on the free throw was a big play right now. You got a lot of big plays from a lot of different players tonight. Everybody contributed. Well, it takes that kind of contribution over a team this time of year in the final 16. Obviously, I've got to ask the question. It may set it up. It could be you and Louisville playing in the Mideast Regional. Well, you know, we're just happy to be there, Larry. Uh, everybody you play is tough, and uh, we know it's going to be another tough game Saturday, but we're just very thankful that we're going to be here. Joe, can I get your big center in here and talk with him? Thank you. Let's get Melvin Turpin in here. Melvin, you had a great basketball game. You took it to those guys inside pretty strong. I think a lot of it was pretty hard inside. We got the ball inside to Kenny Walker. He did off the job. It was hard because they had blogging out here. He was blocking a lot of shots. He tried to. He just kept on going inside. We had great shooting. Uh, outside by Jim Masters, and he did actually the job. How about that slam in the first half? How did you and Dirk Minifield communicate to one another? Well, you know, when we first came out, you know, we always hooping behind each other, getting each other fired up. I always told him I want to lie one time and another. Finally got to me. But at first I thought I didn't have it, but I reached up and got it and slammed it in. It showed a lot of confidence on your part to try to go inside against Blob. You really went to him. Yeah, you know, that's, that's what I feel I do, go straight into him. Uh, I don't care if it's seven foot, seven five, or whatever. I, I'm here to help my team to win, and I'm going to take the ball straight to the middle if I have to. Defensively, Blob was giving you a few problems. He'd give you that little bit of ball fake, get you up in the air off balance. You were having a struggle with him also in the second half. Yes, I did. I had a lot of trouble. I don't know. He made me arch my shot a little more high. provide a good one-two punch for Kentucky inside. He anchors one side, you the other. They really tried to push the ball to you guys throughout most of this basketball game. Well, we know we don't make any roommates and stuff, but we talk a lot, a lot of times inside about it. Sometimes they come on block, they're too many on Kenny Walker, sometimes they're too many on me. But they got a shot. I tell them all to shoot it. I, I try to spot them up with a slam or something. It works a lot. Melvin, you obviously got a chance now. You're going to play either Arkansas or Louisville. You got a pick? Louisville. Louisville. But the fans, got to be the fans. Well, I want to play Louisville. Everybody wants to play Louisville, huh? Yes, I, yes they do. You know, and I think it'll be a good matchup for both of us. The little guys with a lot of talent, so do we. I'm sure the crowd would love to see it. The people at the fans at home would love to see it, so I'm hoping that Louisville win. If it is Louisville, how do you match up with them? Do you think you match up well? I think we match up well, yeah. But Louisville goes out in the break better than we do. But we'll try to run with them. But they got to run against them like we got. So it's going to be a fast game for both teams. I think we're going to fit right now, right well, you know. Match up with Dirk Minnesfield. Uh, this side game, you know, they, they can jump, but we got the height advantage. Uh, we'll try to get the ball inside, maybe get them in a little foul trouble. If not, go, go to Jim Mess, Dirk Little, Dirk Minifield, and uh, Dirk Court, and I'll Jones. Now the get to the dressing room. I don't want you to catch a cold. Okay, nice ball game. Good basketball game. Kentucky wins it by five, Tom. Well, it was an exciting game. Everyone predicted it would be close. Kentucky played a stretch in the second half there of almost flawless basketball when they went up by 10. I guess the key plays in the game were the two offensive rebounds off the missed foul shots, one by Melvin Turpin, one by Jim Master, and then, of course, Charlie Hurt, who didn't score but two points in the game, hit the two pressure free throws, and after the good defensive job he did, he was able to hit the two shots, and Kentucky held on to win. It was just a great basketball. Well, I thought the first half, they got an awful lot of play out of Barrow. He played a good first half coming off the bench for them, and then the second half, Kenny Walker kind of picked up the slack. He carried for them in the second half. I thought the inside play of Kentucky really was the difference in the basketball game. Indiana just did not match up well against Kentucky on the inside play. Turpin took it to Blob, and when he did, Blob looked like he didn't know how to handle it. Turpin really ate him up inside. And on the outside, I thought Dirk Menefield showed a lot of leadership. In the first half, he committed a couple of turnovers. I thought when he got in heavy traffic, he panicked a little bit. But in the second half, he showed his poise and his confidence. He really played an extremely good floor game in the second half. Well, you know, Larry, to succeed in tournament play, it takes depth. And I thought the depth of Kentucky very much in evidence here tonight. And you mentioned Bear up and Walker especially, and Beal did a pretty good job handling the ball as well. Yeah, he did. Indiana looked like they were liking a little bit. Giambi came in and played a pretty good. He got two good baskets for Indiana right toward the end right there. And they cut that lead from 10 down to 2. And oftentimes when you have a lead cut like that, 
you get a little bit tired, particularly the clubs in the lead. You start thinking, you look over your shoulder, how close are they? What is the score? Well, Kentucky didn't panic, and that's to their credit because they had a chance to do it then, but they didn't. Larry, I have the unofficial individual scoring in the game. Let's take just a quick look at it. For Indiana, their leading point getter was Randy Whitman. He had eight points at halftime, and they really shut him off pretty well, especially in the zone defense. Charlie Hurt did a good job on him, but Whitman nevertheless was able to be the leading scorer in the game, 18 points. Uwe Block had 17 points. He did a good job inside. We said he'd improved, and he showed it tonight. 17 points for Block, and they were the only two Indiana players in double figures. Steve Bucci had eight points, eight points for Tony Brown. Jim Thomas had four points all in the second half, and four points, as you mentioned, for the freshman Mike Diomi, who came off the bench late in the game for Indiana. Now for Kentucky, their leading point getter was Melvin Turpin. Turpin had 16 points as the Wildcats placed four players in double figures. 16 for Turpin. We had 13 points for Kenny Walker, again coming off the Kentucky bench. 12 points for Jim Master, who supplied the outside scoring punch, along with his backcourt running mate, Dirk Minifield, who had 11. So balance, good Kentucky scoring. 16 for Turpin, 13 for Walker, 12 for Master, and 11 for Minifield. The rest of the scoring for Kentucky, Brent Merrill, those eight big points in the first half. We had two points for Dickie Beal and two points, the two plus free throws by Charles Hurt. And obviously now it sets up that, that game that everyone seems to be talking about all year long. It could be a Kentucky playable game, but right now Louisville's got to play a good Arkansas basketball team. Arkansas's got a good club. They'll come out here and play Louisville very tough in this second game. There are a lot of people probably in the state of Kentucky are talking about the possible matchup between those two clubs. Well, as I guess most of our fans know, 